embrace it with your presence, God. I want to fill us up with that fire of your Holy Spirit, God. The anointing breaks our bondages, God. Increase that fire, God. Burn everything that's not of you, God. We completely surrender to you, God. There is freedom in this place. Come on. an atmosphere we have to create a life we have to create heaven on earth where demons and devils can no longer stand come on i don't care what comes at us i don't care what persecution comes at us this is real this is not a game we can't sit back and watch while people are hurting and broken and lost and they're dying every day and want to commit suicide and these demons and devils prevail we have to create an atmosphere we have to create a life sold out for jesus sold out for jesus 100 percent you have to do it. This is not a game. This world's not a game. It's not about a position. It's not about a power. It's not about a church. It's about freedom. He that the Son is set free is free indeed. People need free. They need free. And it's our job to create an atmosphere of life, to lay hands on people, cast devils out, to walk in the fullness of God. It's our job. It's our job. Because if we're not the answer, then they go to hospital, then they end up on drugs, they end up the worse. We have to walk this thing out. We have to walk it out in the fullness of God. No more playing games. Not for anybody. Not for anybody. If you're sitting in this church, especially you're sitting under this ministry, you have to be on fire for God. you got to be full of God. There's people who are hurting and dying every day. Every day. And it's your job to be full of that. Full of the power of God. Full of the love of God. How can you say you know God and you know love, then you look at your brother and sister in Christ and they're struggling and you're not willing to do everything it takes to get them free? You don't know God. You can't sit and look at people struggling in their own drugs, their own whatever. They're just lost in an attic or they're just whatever, bound by sin. And you look at them and say you love them and say, I'm not willing to do everything in my life, surrender it all, die to myself, and give it all for them to get free. If you tell me that, you don't know God. Because God's a God of love. He's a God of perfection. He's a God of holiness. And it's our job to live this thing out, fulfill the calling of God to set the captives free. It's our whole purpose. It's our whole purpose. Go and set the captives free. We have to be full of the anointing. We have to be full of God. We have to be full of the power. And to do all that, you just got to be full of love. You got to... Whether it's, you want to use the word press in, I don't know what the word is, but that's the best one. I just hate because religion grabs these words and they twist them and change them and they make them. But we have to press in. We have to knock harder. We have to seek harder. We have to get on our hands and knees. We have to fast. We have to pray. We have to do all this. Because people are hurting. And, and Jesus is the answer. If Jesus is the answer and Jesus is in us, then we're the answer. I know people don't want to take on that responsibility, but it is. You are, you are the answer to people's problems. And it's not by just coming to church and not by just reading your Bible. It's about everything. It's about fasting, praying, hungering, thirsting for righteousness. Being that example. When you're by yourself, you don't know what to do. You just got to pray in the Holy Ghost. You just got to seek and fast. And it's get in His Word, whatever it is. But we got to quit playing games. We got to quit playing games. Not that I'm saying anybody's in here, but it's just you, I see it. I see it every day. Why? Because I'm looking for it. I'm looking for the lost. I'm looking for the broken. I'm looking for the wounded. I'm looking for that. Why? Because I carry something greater that they need. So we look for that. You be full of that. So when you see it, it's just your first answer. So let me lay hands on them. Because what lives in me is greater than anything. And if I can just get my hands on them, 
It may not happen then. It may, it may not, but it doesn't matter. But I got to be willing to surrender it all, be willing to no matter what it looks like. They don't care if it's in Walmart, Publix, everybody looks around wondering who's there. Who cares? If you truly love, and you truly love your brother, how can we just sit there and watch him struggle? We have to have the answer. And if you don't have the answer, then I mean, the best thing is drag him to church, and I get that. But ultimately, we got to grab a hold of this. we got to be full of this. we got to have the answer. And the answer is Jesus. Much better. Give me a, I know all y'all couldn't hear that. I want you to tell that whole tell that whole deal one more time. All right. So today around two o'clock, I work in the HVAC industry, so I'm always sweating. And for some reason today around two o'clock, my ear, my right ear, felt like I put a lit cigarette out in my ear for no reason. And the longer my day went, the worse it got. I gritted my teeth and went ahead and went to work, finished out my job do what I got to do and came home and the longer I waited the longer I waited the worse it got the worse it got and my loving wife Angie here she's like do you want to go to church tonight I'm like yeah yeah I do want to go to church and the closer I got here the harder my ear was thumping um didn't have no music playing on the way here I've been listening to rare breed all day long all day long all day long I have played it. I quit playing the radio and listening to all the hatred. And I've been listening to Christian music for almost a week every single day. And coming here tonight, and like I said, in my ear, I felt like I put a lit cigarette out in my ear. And I couldn't take the pain no longer. I come up here and Pastor Bobby laid his hands on my ear, on, on the spot that hurt. And it was like an explosion of poof gone I'm not hurting right now I can put pressure on my ear I couldn't touch it I could not touch my ear 30 minutes ago without being in excruciating pain and now I can I can press on it there's no pain thank you Lord Amen. I don't even know where to begin. I really don't. Other than we both are recovering addicts, but we are set free by from God. Sunday after church, Pastor Bobby got a hold of me again. And our nine-year-old son witnessed my leg grow another about two inches. And I got about that big now. I didn't see it. I was like raised that. Pentecostal. It really happened. We were both raised Pentecostal when we fell away. And we had gotten into a bad spot where we needed food. We didn't have a job, neither one of us. And I don't even see her tonight. But um, one of the other ladies that I've known off and on in my life told me y'all did food drives. We came, got food boxes. And now we can both say that he is making enough money that I don't have to work anymore. Wow. And we're both clean. What like clean? Both clean. And that's just something that my husband and husband has not been able to see in almost 20 years. And been best friends for 18 years we've been together two years this time and married under God for almost a year and without God I don't know where I would be I'd still be out there lost I'd be lost that's for sure but I just want to thank y'all for opening your doors 
for people to come to church as they are. I struggled wearing what I have on tonight. I struggled. I said, that's not the way I was raised. He goes, baby, go comfortable. Go comfortable. You know they don't care. I'm in work clothes. I'm still sweaty. <laughs> I'm covered in paint. You're here. I'm here. God doesn't care what I wear. He doesn't care if I got tattoos, if my ring's colored. I got purple hair. I got a hair on my face. No hair on my face. He don't care about none of that. That's, that's the thing. But he says, the church is who we are. Not the building. It's us. I was raised in the church. I strayed away from God, but I've always knew in my head that's where it needed to be. And I have, I'm clean from dope. Um, I cut a really good job. I am on my own boss again. I, I'm a teacher now. I have a helper that is actually under me, learning from me. And it's like, I've been praying for this for years. Like, for years. Probably for the past six years, I've been praying. Not every day, but always the same prayer. Lord, just put me in a position where you know my worth and my strengths and let me excel. That's all I want. And now I have a company truck. I have a company truck. I don't have to worry about paying for fuel or insurance or upkeep on my vehicle. I have a company 2017 Ford Transit vehicle. It's mine. I have a company credit card. I have a company that has showed proof in me from the get-go. And I can't, I'm going to give a name because it's him. But he was the one that gave it to me. <laughs> that I good? Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Don't sit down. You know it's coming. Bring your son too. <clears throat> you can bring mom in law too if you want. Just because she don't want to come. I want to make her. I want to make her feel uncomfortable. Your turn. <laughs> About three weeks ago, my Is husband awesome came into the refuge on the ridge, and he got sent to Freedom, the warehouse, and uh, he got his hands on my husband. <laughs> oh yeah. And he like he cast demons out of him, and he's like a whole new person. Um, he prays with us. He talks to us whenever we're at church. And my son, <laughs> he sent us to to Pastor Bobby, and we went and we all got saved. My daughter. Yeah. <laughs> Who? Kyle. Kyle. Remember? Oh, my son. What are, you, what are you like? They volunteer. Is that what it's called, Bobby? Yeah, the Refuge volunteer. on the Ridge. And I know Pastor Bobby. And I said, so Kyle, what do you think of Pastor Bobby? He said, oh, I don't like him too much. <laughs> <laughs> now he loves it. Then a couple days later, he sent me this text. And I, he's like, Mom, I was working up at Freedom today. And I said, Pastor Bobby got his hands on you, didn't he? He said, yes, ma'am. <laughs> yep. <laughs> I'm 15 and at first before I met Bobby I was never really I didn't believe in him or anything but then he prayed for me and I just came up a whole new person I was I'm always ready to go to church I can't wait to come here I'm like I made Like, I, I had him up and ready before anything. Before I was even ready, I was ready to go. I'm always asking to come here, and it's just a miracle that I just came from not being religious at all to being religious. <laughs> Amen. You ain't religious. You're a child of God. Don't put yourself in that category. <laughs> Love you guys. Your turn. 
Danny? Yes. <clears throat> My mom told you, didn't she? Oh yeah. She got told. Oh good. Well I'm gonna tell about the um, <laughs> I'm gonna tell about the um, test drive and how it went. <laughs> so let me back up to about three weeks ago. Took my son to get a haircut in Bartow, and I've known the guy real, real well for a long time. And he had a really good deal on a 2016 Nissan Pathfinder that he only wanted three grand for. I already had my my van sold for a thousand dollars, so I was only going to have to come out of pocket for two grand. I didn't hear anything else from the guy, so I was like, okay. I'm not going to fret about it. Praise God. Either way, I, I still have a running, driving vehicle. I'm going to go on about my business. So yesterday, me, Mom, and Eli are sitting down eating breakfast. And I will, as we're pulling in to eat breakfast, God says, go get your car today. And I don't know if you guys know Janet German, but I watch her every morning. And she's, that day, that particular day, I'd sown a Jubilee seed, which was, I'll put it out there, $55. I sowed, I sowed it. So... I'm sitting in the parking lot, and he speaks to me. He says, go get your car. I'm like, oh, okay, okay. Mind you, I've only been working on my credit score for about six, seven months. wasn't perfect. So we eat breakfast, and then um, I go to Regal Kia right there on 98. I pull in, and I pull in right next to this black... Um, I can't even think. Kia Optima, or yeah, Kia Sorento. What I was going to look for was a 2022. Okay, so I get out, I step out the car, and I said, "That's her, right there. That's her." I pointed right at her, and I met the guy. His name was Pablo, and he was like, "Can I just say I love your faith?" Like he was like, "You got out and you pointed to what you wanted, and you said," and, and I did make the statement. I said, "I'm, I'm going home with a new car." I'm going home with a new car. I said that before I even pulled in there. Because God told me to go get my car. He's not going to go tell me to go somewhere and not let it happen. That's just what I've experienced from coming here. So the test drive. He, he brings us the keys to this car. And mind you, it's on 98. We're from Altura. So we don't, we don't really do that Lakeland traffic. It's too congested over there. So... We drive around, we turn by the Duncan, make a little U-turn around the high school, and then come back around, and the guy's like, okay, when you get straight, I want you to press this button right here and let go of the wheel. Let go of the wheel. Mom didn't hear that part. <laughs> <laughs> so we get on the straightaway. He reaches behind me. He's sitting behind me. He presses the button, and I let go of the wheel. She's grabbing the window. She's grabbing air. Like she, He's losing it back here. We had... I've never had a car buying experience be that fun. Um, and like the whole time, I was just like, you know what? I get it. I get it. I don't. I don't. Praise God either way. But I'm leaving with a car, you know, and twiddling my thumbs a little bit, waiting on him to come out. And you know, I smelled I went outside by myself for a little bit. I was just praying in the Holy Ghost. Like, it's, I'm here for a reason. About 20 minutes goes by. He comes back and he's like, we got it. I'm driving a 2019 Kia Sorento that I traded my van in that I paid $400 for. They gave me $1,000 for my car, and I paid no money down. Um, and this is really a big blessing to me because I've, I've never had, I'm sorry, I've never had, um, not saying a reliable vehicle, but I was always stuck with the leftovers. And God said, it's time to level up. You ain't settling for leftovers. You gonna level up. I'm taking you from glory to glory to glory. Mom, I love her, but she's like, you really think you can afford this? He wouldn't have sent me here if he didn't think I could afford it. He's going to send the people that's going to leave me another $126 tip. I know y'all seen that the other day. Too. <laughs> but he's he's, he's going to make a way for it all. I don't, I, I don't worry about it. 
and from me a few months ago, I was just like, I was that, that Christian he was talking about just kind of going with the motions, going with the flow, and you know, like, you say you're blessed, you claim you're blessed, but you're walking around with a sad face, like, you can't, you can't say you're blessed and be like, mm, whatever, you can't, you can't do that, you can't do that, I got out of that car, pointed at that vehicle, and said, that's the one I want. And actually, when he went and ran my numbers, he was like, I can't get you in that particular one, but I can get you in something. So I praise God for my new car. I, I, I love it. I love it. And all the kids open. I know pe- some people take stuff like this for granted, but um, for the longest time, my kids have been climbing in and out of my front doors because my side doors have don't, they just didn't work. Why complain about it? It gets me from point A to point B. It ain't going to do no good. But now I got five doors that open. <laughs> you got to learn to pray in that Holy Ghost. That's what I do when my wife drives. I'm shaka ba 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 she did it above my da Lord, put angels around me all the time. Lord, get me back here and safe. But it's back to what we said earlier. This is not a game. People are hurting. People are struggling. And I don't care if you like me or don't like me. <laughs> Do I love them? I love you. Most people who say they don't like me because they don't know me. They've heard stories. They've heard lies. they heard their, this and that. But I'm just telling you, I'm I'm not here to brag or boast or Don told you all the other day, but and other people will tell you. I'm sold out. I just nothing more important than God to me. It's just there's nothing more important. There's nothing more important than the kingdom of God. There's nothing more important than the gospel. There's nothing more important than what's seeing life touch, change, heal, deliver, set free. There's nothing more important. I don't care what get laid in front of me and somebody comes to me and you offer you, me a billion dollars to change, I ain't changing. I don't care. It's you can't you can't buy this. You can't. I read the scripture Sunday, you know, it's guy finds a pearl, sells everything, gives every, everything just for that just for that one. And that's what it's about. It's just about selling everything just for one. Seeing one life touched, one life changed, one life make a difference. And you look around, this is a Wednesday night. It's more than one, one, just one. But when you put just one, he'll do one, he'll do one, he'll do one, he'll do one. Then that one goes and touch this one and tells this one. And actually, you were talking about Ivy. Is that who you were talking about? I think she was talking about Ivy was telling her. No? Is there for somebody else? Okay. <clears throat> but that person told her about this. Then actually, I seen her at the courthouse or the tag agency. I come walking out of the tag agency, she seen my shirt, and she started telling me different stories and that kind of stuff. Then it's this... It's, it's real, you know what I'm saying? And deliverance is real, and it's spirit infirmities, and the Bible commands us time after time, go cast them out. And what happened for that family there, if you've seen it here Sunday, you've seen her, you know, just we cast things out of her Sunday. She's screaming, hollering, things come out of her. I pray for him, baptized in the Holy Ghost, both again, baptized in the Holy Ghost, praying in tongues. And the enemy's last tactic is to come at you with fear. He's to come at you hard as he can because once you understand he gets you to baptize the Holy Ghost in fire, he's like, oh, I ain't got nothing else. I got to just, and so that pain he hears, yeah, it's just in his ear or whatever, it was that last attack of that enemy trying to get him to turn back the opposite way and go in the opposite direction and whatever. And like I said, you know, just from the simplicity of just whether growing up in or knowing God, come up here, get healed. And it wasn't much the music thumping, it was us singing. You know, us praising God. That devil didn't want nothing to do with it, but he's going to make that pain worse and, and harder than ever just come in. And it's just, but we got to have the answer. And it's just telling things to go, come out. Walking in the power of God and just setting the captives free. It's the most important thing. It's walking in his anointing, walking in his calling. And you can't just, so many times when it comes, you know, people want to fall and, don't want to talk about deliverances, don't want to talk about that, but it's real. It's real. I remember when I first met Dawn, she was actually telling people about 
her daughter getting delivered. Her daughter come here and got delivered from drugs and addiction and all that kind of stuff. And, and I remember she come one time, she showed up here. She tells a story of, she says, I, and I walk through, sometimes I'm just pray for people fire and just touch them and go through and different things. Sometimes I spend a couple seconds, some a couple more minutes, and I pray. Went down. I can't remember. She could tell the story if I prayed for her once, whatever. But she stood up front. She said, I'm not leaving here till I'm free. She stood there at that place right here, and she said, I'm not leaving here till I get free. And not only for me, for us as believers, got to be where we can make that happen, but us as unbelievers or believers stepping into it, we got to go, hey, I need to be free. I'm willing to do everything it takes, whatever it's going to take. I'll leave here. I don't care if I look stupid. I don't care what happens. I need to be free. <clears throat> and a lot of people ain't willing to do that. For once, they've never seen it. People are ashamed and timid to cast out devils. They're scared of it. They're, I remember one pastor, I was telling him that. He says, man, you're in the trenches. And I'm like, no, I'm in the trenches. I'm just in the world with people. You call it trenches because you think it's something hard and difficult. It's not. It's just reality. They're everywhere. We give them names. We give them arthritis. We give them diabetes. We, call, we give these demons and devils names, epilepsy, all these things names because they don't know what to deal with it, want to deal with it. And everybody's ashamed of the gospel. They're ashamed. No, demons and devils are real. They are 100% real. The reason why the Bible, the Bible even says we wrestle not with flesh and blood. And, and Christians all over the world, even from Baptists, have quote that scripture, but they ain't got no clue what it means or anything about it. But so we wrestle not, but with principalities, powers in higher places, and spirits, all that kind of stuff. That's what we, now, and they'll twist that on you too. When you're in the world and you're in flesh, you will battle with spirits, principalities, powers in higher places. When you're a child of God, a son of God, I don't battle with none of them. I tell them where to go. Some religions, some people, even Pentecostal go, oh, that's what we wrestle with. And they've got all these spiritual warfares and this warfare and that warfare and talking of this and that. I ain't got time for none of that. If I'm going to do anything, I'm going to worship Jesus, praise Jesus. I say it so many times, it's, it's just a reoccurring thing. We keep making shirts out of everything we say around here. <laughs> but, but it's just, if I sit here and praise Jesus, Guess who? Everybody's going to leave. Don't want to hear nothing about Jesus. You want to see if somebody's demon possessed? Start praying in the Holy Ghost. Start telling them about Jesus. And see what happens. Start talking about the blood of Jesus. They'll get up and go. It ain't them that's getting up and going. It's some demons and spirits that are in them. Well, I'm a Christian. I believe in this. Well, let's, let's talk about Jesus. Let's talk about casting out devils. Let's talk about the blood of Jesus, what it does. Let's talk about manifestation of the power of the Holy Ghost. They'll start, don't believe, they'll start manifesting. Or get up and leave. And the problem is people don't understand that because they, they've never seen the example. Because people are ashamed of it. They're threatened by it. Because really what happens is, if that's, so for me, I'm going to back up just a hair, but I understand the persecution. It doesn't bother me a bit. It's the reason why you got to be dead to yourself. People are going to come at you sideways. And, and God will put you in places and he protects you. It's his grace and his mercy. But ultimately, you get to a place where he goes, okay, you're not you're on your own, but now I'm pulling my hedge. Not, not the hedge of protection in a sense, but I'm going to allow these people to come at you. And I'm going to see if you're truly full of fire and God, are you going to stand ground and tell them about Jesus, or are you going to back down and water it down a little bit? And he's got me in a place where I'm not willing to back down. I'm not going to back down. I don't care who comes at me. They come at me sideways. They want to talk smack. I could care less because I love people that much. I can't sit back and watch people being struggling. I don't, you know, it's, we make fun a lot of times of different churches and denominations, these people to go there. But really, my heart cries out for them because they're lost. They're going to church. They're maybe going twice a week. They're doing Sunday schools. They're helping out. They're sweeping, doing all the stuff, but they're still lost. They have no clue who God is. They know about them, but they don't know them. And my heart cries out for them, whether it's a, a program, it's a church or whatever. They're, they're just walking around like they think they know something all puffed up, and they ain't know nothing. Because these people are still struggling. They're hurting. They're broken. They're lost. And they just need the love of God and the power of God. And it's, you can't tell me that you love God and you're watching people struggling. But I remember going to, I took my, me and my wife, flew out to Jesse Duplantis, to his pastor and leadership conference one year. And I've been around this long enough. My, my wife ain't always been in the ministry. You know, when we first got saved, when I first got saved, 
we were probably like higher levels than I just, not that there's levels in God, but I just went after God 100%. I was sold out 100%. So what I started believing and started talking and, you know, when we go on vacation, I got earbuds in my ear and I'm listening to preaching and I'm, you know, reading the Bible, doing all this. And she's mad at me because I'm not spending time with her and all this stuff. And I don't want to go on vacation no more because she didn't understand. And I didn't understand either. I just knew there was something in me that I, I had to have the gospel. I got I to gotta know more. I got to understand how this works, how this operates and that kind of stuff. So I've seen things and I understand principalities and powers and, and I understand people. So we're there and all of a sudden we go off to a parking lot and this lady just starts going off at my wife and daughter, especially looking at my daughter just going off. I mean, she's probably from me to Dawn and she's just looking, staring my daughter down and just kind of going off and I'm laughing. And if you know my wife, she don't laugh at that kind of stuff. <laughs> we make fun in the last couple of days and I've been like, now she works for the ministry now. She always worked children's, not always, but she's done children's church now she's at Freedom. And so I make fun, I tell her, she's a gangster. Y'all be careful now, she's a gangster. You don't play with her, especially in the old days. She used to, she used to be in the dope game, and she didn't play back then. I've heard stories, and even when I met her, I I've never been around that stuff. I was a beer drinker, beer drink every now and then, smoke a little weed, you know, whatever. I never bought it. Somebody would just pass it around, and I'd smoke it, whatever. And I don't even know why y'all smoke that stuff, because for real, I be I'm just in the world. This is in the world, my life in the world. I thought I was having a good time. So it was to me at that time. I'm having a good time. I'm drinking beer. We're doing whatever. And all of a sudden, all of a sudden, you want to pass weed around, smoke weed. Now I want to pass out and dream, dream weird dreams, wake up with cotton mouth and all this stuff. I'm like, why do y'all waste your time with this stuff? But the difference was I would do this. I get drunk again. I get dumb enough. Somebody pass around because I was dumb and I'd do it again. And I'm like, but I never bought the stuff anyhow. But I've never been around meth and that kind of stuff. So when I met my wife, I didn't know it. She was doing meth. I would leave, I would leave on a, I'd work Monday through Thursday out of town. I'd leave on Monday morning, come back Thursday night. She would pick me up at Thursday night because I'd come in like at 2, 12, 12 at night, 2 in the morning. So we'd work from 12 to 2 in the morning, or 12, 12 to 12, or 12 to 2, depending on what it was. But she would pick me up. Then I didn't know it. She was popping um, Xanax Friday, Saturday, Sunday because she was, because yeah, the, the sleep and go off because Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, she was doing mess. And what she, and I didn't know the attributes of it. I didn't know the characteristics of it, that kind of stuff. But as I got around it, I started questioning and asking and finding quick answers. And, and I remember one time my, one of my friends come over. And we'd always party and drink. And I never understood. I mean, I could sometimes stay up till 2, 3, 4 in the morning. And sometimes, every once in a blue moon, we'd struggle to stay up. We'd say, man, we're going to stay up till sunrise. We're gonna, we, I mean, it took everything I had because you're steady drinking. You know, it's, it's a downer, depressor. but Not a depressor, but a downer. So alcohol is just making you tired and sleep, and, and these guys I would run around with, they would stay up all night and all day, and I had no clue how they would do it, why they would do it, and in my mindset was drugs were horrible. You know, you can't, we shouldn't be doing that kind of deal. Not understanding alcohol is one of the worst drugs ever. It's okay to do my drug, but not that drug. It's a whole different ballgame. You know, we categorize drugs. <clears throat> so one day a friend of mine come over. He's cutting trees and doing tree work, and He's bouncing around doing this kind of stuff, and we got done. He left. My wife said, he's on meth. I said, he ain't on meth. I said, I've known him my whole life. She said, I'm telling you, he's on meth. I said, there ain't no way. She said, I'm telling you, his eyes, your, your, I guess your retinas get real big. So your, she said, retinas are real big. And she told, me, she told me all the characteristics of it because that's what she hung around with for a couple of years there. And because um, she understood the characteristics of it. She was around it. Well, come to find out a couple months later, I found out he was doing meth. It, it got, got all kinds of stuff. So I told you, you never, he's always, you never listen to me. I know this. I know that. Kind of, y'all women know how y'all are. I'm just kidding. But, but she knew. And um, why does she know that? Because it was a characteristic she was around. So for me, I've been around the gospel of the kingdom, and I'm pressing in. I'm hungry for God. Nothing else matters but the kingdom. And, and I'm listening to guys who are casting out devils and healing the sick and miracles and signs and wonders, all this kind of stuff that it's just in me. And I, it's a fire I couldn't contain and more and more. So we were walking through part on this. This girl's going off. My wife just wants, she wants to, I'm called, she wants to bounce on her. You know what I'm saying? She's, I said, it's okay. So what do you mean it's okay? This lady's going, I said, it's demons. What do you mean? I said, they're manifesting. That's all they're doing. I said, they see the anointing. That, them devils know. Devils are spiritual. You know, most, unfortunately, most people in witchcraft fast and pray to most Christians do. They do. But they're in the spiritual realm. That's the reason why you can start seeing things move and that kind of stuff. That's all real. And they have the power to do that. 
You know, that's the reason why you go to over in Africa, whatever they call them, witch doctors. And what they do is their answer to everything is go to the witch doctor. All the witch doctor does is trade you one demon out for another demon. That's all he does. Yeah, make you pay, get you, he wants to keep you, it's like pharmaceutical and doctors. We'll keep you on one medicine and go to the next medicine. I don't watch much TV, but every now and then you flip through channels, different things, the commercial's on, and it's pharmaceutical. And it starts talking about the side effects. It's talking about diarrhea, suicide, migraines. I'm like, why do you, so now you got to take a medicine to overdo that medicine because you're on that medicine, that medicine does this, and you got to take another, and that's what witchcraft does and that kind of stuff. This stuff's real. So we go in there, and we, this lady almost, so the guys out in the parking lot, the parking attendants are like, hey, we'll take care of it. They're talking to her, this kind of stuff. And the lady, and we just keep walking. And my wife, she's just, I'm walking and laughing and smiling. My wife's going, she got that little itch on her, you know. She still wants to, still, we're still dealing with some flesh here. She's trying to, because that's her baby girl. You ain't touching my baby girl. You ain't messing with my baby girl. I can tell you so many stories that just fall along with that. I will. So it's my, but so my, mine is, my faith is, I trust God. God's got my back. He's going to protect my kids. He's going to do all this kind of stuff. So here, some of y'all, I wasn't here the other weekend because I went up to South Carolina. We got a place up there. Then from there, I went to North Carolina. But it actually, one reason we went is my daughter's birthday. So she wanted to go to our place in South Carolina. We ride the woods. God's blessed us. If y'all want to hear, God, we have 2,500 acres up there that we lease, but we pay zero dollars for it. to God. God just blesses us with that. That's who, the, big, the God I serve. So we get to hunt and do stuff for free, and that's how I got saved was through hunting. So I don't go, oh, I can't quit hunting and fishing. I don't care to do it, but I do that because it brings people around me that I can pour into and, and love on and teach them and do things, that kind of stuff. So anyway, so she, she was supposed to come up with a boyfriend. He got sick, couldn't come. So she drove all the way from here to there, which is six hours by herself. Now my daughter's 19, so she's all stressing out, this kind of stuff, all worried about it. So she comes up and um, she gets there. Then when we go to leave, she's like, how's she going to get home? I said, the same way she got here. I said, she drove here. She'll drive home. And she's like, no, no, no. She, I said, yes, yeah, she will. So next thing you know, my daughter, she comes up to me. And she's, hey, I'm leaving, Dad. It's okay. So I hug her. I kiss her. And I, and I was careful with my words. I didn't say be careful. I said, pay attention. Just, just pay attention to what you're doing. And it's okay. Because I know we always say, hey, be careful, be safe. No, she's all that. Why? Because God's got her. Because I believe that. And that's all it was. I said, hey, just pay attention. I love you. And left. And so she leaves. And, and we got a couple different houses there. We got a three-bedroom, two-bath, like a double wide. Then we got a little cottage house. Then we have a um, uh, park model trailer that we stay in. My wife stays in that kind of stuff because it's new. And um, if you know my wife, her, her, my wife's idea is camping the Ritz-Carlton. <laughs> I can sleep under the bridge with the homeless people. It don't bother me. I've done it before. And it's no big deal. So anyway, so next thing you know, I leave. My daughter leaves. She comes. So our, the place I was at is the last place where my daughter goes out. So my daughter left. So I get done what I'm doing. I walk back out to my wife, and I walk in there. She's sitting there going boo-hoo. She says, did you pray for her? I was like, no. She said, what do you mean you didn't pray for her? I was like, no. What do you mean you didn't pray for her? She was boo-hooing. I said, what's wrong with you? You should have prayed for her. I said, God's got her. I said, I've already prayed for her a long time ago. I plead the blood of Jesus over here. I'm done. I said, it's, 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 I'm done. I mean, God's got me. He's got her. I'm not worried about it. So we're walking in this church, same deal. I'm not worried about it. This lady can manifest all she wants to. Because I truly believe and know greater is he that's in me than he that's in the world. Not only do I say that, I believe it. It ain't just the word of God. I know that. God, God is just a puppeteer. He's just making, the devil means nothing to him. The devil's just another pawn in his little game. He just moves them around to see how you're going to respond, how you're going to act, how you're going to react. So we go sit in the church, and literally we go sit, you know, it's a bigger conference, a lot of big-name guys there, so I just go, and I sit in the back, and I'm sitting in the back, and lo and behold, guess who sits in the front row right in front of me? That woman. She comes sitting there, and the whole, she's a row in front of me, she's doing this. And she's just eyeballing my daughter and my wife. And my daughter, she, my wife, she's just getting all, my wife, my daughter's kind of, good thing is she's got a lot of her dad attributes. She could care less. She's just sitting there smiling, whatever. And, I, and I'm having to explain to my wife, she's just manifesting. They're just demons. They can't stand it. They can't stand what we're doing. They're trying to intimidate, move us, motivate us however they can. But when they can't, then that's the, the last tactic is fear. So once I talked to her, it was like, oh, okay, I understand. 
Because why? I understood the characteristics. Just like when she was on drugs and dope, she knew the characteristics of them people. When you become a, a, a child of God, you understand the characteristics of the, the demons. You understand the characteristics of the spiritual realm to where all they're doing is manifesting to scare you, to put fear in you. Because you go to most places, you start casting out devils, they start manifesting, most people, choom, they're out the door. I've had many of them. It's funny. I've, we had, you want to use the word revival, everybody likes the word revival. I don't like it, but it, you understand when I say revival. We were in a huddle house one night. And I've showed you all this video. And I was laying hands on people. Boom. In the huddle house, they're falling out in power of God, praying in tongues. We have every waitress in there just lifting their hands to heaven and giving their lives to Jesus. And it's just power of God's hitting people. And people are getting healed and all this delivered and all this kind of stuff. And literally, the huddle house door was here. I had a, bo a body. A woman was laid down right there on the ground. And this gentleman walks in. When he walks in, he looks around. He looks down. And he gently opened the door. He took off fast as he could, buddy. He was like, I'm out of here. I don't know what y'all have done, what's going on, but I don't want nothing to do with it. And I've seen churches, buddy. You start casting devils out, buddy, them people are out that door. I don't know about that. Actually, his brother Danny, I can't tell you, Danny so many times has come here trying to get his life right and change his life right. And he'd be sitting here, we casting devils out. And, buddy, he would tear chairs down fast as he could to get out that door. Am I right, Junior? He'll tell you. He says, man, them things, I'm, and pretty much he ain't admitting it, but he says, I don't want them things to get on me. I said, well, if you're full of God, you ain't got to worry about them get on you. That's the whole point of giving your life to Jesus, be full of God. You're free from all that. Keep your house full. It's the reason why, you know, you got to get healed, you got to get delivered, but then you got to keep your house full. You know, for the longest time, I never understood that scripture. The Bible says you cast devils out, and the devils go out and they go roaming looking for a place to find home and they can't find it and they come back and the house is swept and clean and I'm like I thought that's the whole purpose of it me my job is to cast them out and get the house swept and clean so how they got the right to come back in well the problem is it was swept and clean but the doors are still open because it's not full of nothing so when you get full of the Holy Ghost and fire there's no way to get in it's on the outside trying to get in but it can't find a crack why because you're just overflowing with the power the love of God the Holy Ghost and fire and it gives them no access. So we have to be full of that and don't be scared. I can't tell you how many people are scared of that kind of stuff. And it's like, why? Why are you scared? I mean, that's me. It's, I've told y'all stories. <laughs> but the very first time I've really seen the manifestation of demons, we were right down the road here in an old house we used to preach in. And this lady come up and she was I'm trying to think of somebody's size. Here, you stand up. Not me. Come here, come here. Just turn around. So what do you see here? You see a sweet little grandma, right? That's what you see. You can sit down. So this sweet little grandma comes up to me, and I don't recognize it right off the bat, but I look at her. When I look at her, it's something I'd have seen. Her eyes were all black. She didn't have no, like, we got blue eyes, green eyes. She still had the white around it, but the blue or the green was all black. And I noticed that right off the bat. Anyway, she's come up to me, just, just sweet little grandma, probably didn't weigh 90 pounds or so. And um, she's like, I hear these things, they talk to me, and I, I've been to the chiropractor, and when I go to the chiropractor, they move, and this kind of stuff, and these things move, and do this kind of, I hear them, they talk to me, they torment me, all this kind of stuff. Well, it just so happened, I'd done an evangelistic class at a church, I would say, Winter Haven Worship Center, they allowed me, they didn't, they didn't allow me one or two times to do evangelistic class. <laughs> they allowed me to do evangelistic class there. And I was teaching them about casting out devils and the power of God and all those kind of stuff. And the guy who was sitting there was actually one of the chiropractors. So she had actually went to the chiropractor and said, these things are things. So he actually come to me after service one day and said, hey, you talked about this. How, how, I, I tried and all they did, they started manifesting. He said, I'm, trying in the, I'm in there trying to cast these things out. And all of a sudden they start talking to me and all this kind of stuff. And he said, I kind of got scared. He said, so guess what? I'm bringing her to you. So he did. So she walks in there and she's telling me all this stuff. Anyways, I laid, when I laid hands on her, I literally, she was standing, when I laid hands on her, I said, fire God, she flew back about four feet. And when she did, just loud screams, like, ah, I just flew back in there, boom, hits the ground and just starts manifesting, just everything, you, ah, and I'm just casting. Now, literally, my mother was there. I don't know if you, there was, my mother was there. There's a couple other, her jaw went this way and her head went this way. It was the most, there's no impossible, there's no possible way your body could do that, but it did it. And all of a sudden, then her eyes rolled back in her head, and it started her milkish gray, and just all this kind of stuff. And she went from 
what you would probably, the world would call it bipolar, but I watched every, you know, from being a child to acting like a baby, acting like a two personalities. She, multiple personalities, just boom, 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 to where act like a baby, cried like a baby, talked like a baby. Then talk like a, then a demons would come out and they would scream. Then she would start cussing at me. Then she started cussing at Jesus. And all of the sweet little grandma, all of a sudden, it's ain't sweet no more. And it's just coming out, coming out, coming out. And, and this is my first time. Next thing you know, I'm over top of her and I'm going, come out. And I'm just yelling, yelling. And the lady beside me goes, Bobby, you don't have to yell. They will listen to you. And I looked at her and I said, I know, but it's fun. <laughs> and it literally is. It's fun. It's like, man, it's just, it's, it's just, it's almost, it's almost like a power trip that it's like, you, you, you're winning. I mean, you know what I'm saying? You, you go your whole life just to win. You know, now all of a sudden you're winning and you're proud of it and you're happy. So I'm just yelling at her, come out. I'm not yelling at her, yelling at things, come out. And they are, they're coming out. It was one of my first times too. And it was like, it took us, I don't know, probably an hour and a half. I mean, and, and, and you learn these things. So a lot of times I'm telling come out, come out. Instead of listening to God, I'm trying to, yes, you're learning. Cause it's like, okay, I've got to just come out. Just talking to them and come out and trying to figure them all out. And God says, after about an hour and a half, hour and 45 minutes, I don't know who it was. Somebody said, hey, she needs, I think it was, I said, she needs water baptized. So, okay. So we're in an old apartment, whatever. There, the apartment we were in, I only had a shower. The apartment next door had a tub in it. So the ladies, you're going to go fill the tub up. So they went and filled the tub up. I said, ladies, y'all go around there because, she, she pretty much by now, she's stripping down, you know, this kind of stuff. So they, said, so y'all go take her and bring her back. Literally, when she walked around the corner, she was glowing, lit up, and had blue, pretty eyes. Come on, that's Jesus. But that's what we got to do. We can't be intimidated. We can't be scared. We can't be wondering what. But if you're never around it, you don't know what it's like. You don't know what the characteristics are. So you can be around people, and they start doing this. And you think, oh, it's just they got twit. No, they got demon. You know, you got to learn to go reach up and just cast that thing out. Don't be scared of it. Don't, be, don't, don't let it move or motivate you the opposite way. Let it move and motivate you to go set the captives free. Lay hands on them. Pray for them. You say, I don't know what to say. You, you'll figure it out. I didn't, you know, that's why I was up and out. <laughs> it's just, there is no language to casting devils out. It's just, I, the best way to say it is you tell everybody else where to go, tell them where to go. Just tell them to come out. That same attitude you had when they want to touch your daughter and your kids and that kind of stuff and be mean to them, like my wife was, that same thing. You talk to them demons, it's that power and authority. You don't know who you're messing with. It ain't us, it's him. But we have to walk this thing out. We have to be full of the fire of the Holy Ghost. Can I get amen? amen. Come on, let's stand on our feet. Come on, we'll just go out. And give us a fast beat, good song we can praise, shout to God with. Come on, he's good. Come on. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Come on. Thank you, Jesus.